Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we'll call this uh, meeting of the uh, Community Emergency Services Committee uh, to order. Uh, bow with me, please. Our most uh, merciful and mighty Lord, we come to you today and thank you for so many blessings, so many things that you have blessed for us to be stewards of. We uh, thank you for all of the blessings. We thank you for the people who protect us, who keep us free and keep us safe. Our nation and some of our citizens are in peril. Uh, we ask your bosom uh, for their protection and thy rod for those who have put them in danger. Thank you, Lord, again, and come reside with us as we consider the matters before us. Amen. Pledge. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, God. We have uh, all three commissioners here. We have the minutes from the previous meeting, gentlemen. <coughs> have you reviewed them? What's your pleasure? To accept. I'll move. Mr. Johnson, is the uh, agenda all set? I believe it's ready for approval, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, sir. Do we have any presentations this morning? No, sir. Nothing in consent. I uh, will go to debate uh, with new business. Mr. Luton, I think you're up, sir. Yes, sir, thank you very much. First item today for consideration is the uh, American Cornhole uh, major South Atlantic Conference Agreement. This would be the fourth year uh, that we're doing this. We had good growth from year one to two. Took a little bit of a step back last year because of COVID. Uh, so we hope to pick this back up and continue its growth. Maybe 200 corn holders. Uh, <laughs> say that. And uh, a lot of those, I'd say 70... <laughs> They have, their, their, they have their own <laughs> national tournament now, be careful. I should have thought about that before I, <laughs> what I was going to call them. 70% uh, or so are coming from out of town. So they say two or three nights. So it's <clears> pretty good uh, hotel impact. So we'd like to recommend approval for this agreement. Move to consent. Second. Has so moved. Next, sir. CSRA, uh, Clark Hill Committee uh, Tournament Agreement. We've done this for several years now. Uh, it's a service <coughs> agreement for them to put on a series of, of tournaments out at Wildwood. I believe the number is six or seven. Uh, we had to shift this to get this on the fiscal year, so this is why you probably saw one just a couple months ago. Uh, staff recommends uh, approval of this. <coughs> Move consent. Second. So moved. Next, sir. <clears throat> it's an exciting event we have coming of you know, the CSRA, or the Mustang Club of America Grand National Show. Uh, and I would like to. Big title. Uh, Big show. I would like to ask Mike Anker and Don Blackstock, Steve Pruitt, they, to come up and say a few words about this. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. John? Good morning. Steve is the president of the National Mustang Club of America. We're local officers where we're also on the board of directors and a national board. Uh, yeah, the Mustang Club of America hosts four national shows across the nation every year. This will be the sixth national level show that the CSRA Mustang Club has hosted. The, uh, this one and the previous two have all been in Columbia County. Uh, we held three in Richmond County prior to that. This will be our third Grand National show. So we had six, three nationals and three, we'll have three Grand Nationals. Uh, we uh, attract participants from all over the country. Uh, we've even had some participate from Germany in some of our shows. It's always an exciting time for the community and uh, the economic impact for the community has always been significant. So. Uh, your support in this effort. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at room nights anywhere from 800 room nights out of four days. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday. Monday. 
that and then 350 to 400 cars counting spectators and of course we're asking to have it over here at the new arts and performance center also showcase hey three years ago three years ago it was at grove town i think we hurt ourselves not was well, beautiful facility more beautiful and that i think we will have <coughs> the city of evans or i think we'll pull more people in because there's more activities here in the park how will we set how will we set up and where will we set up Parking lot, or where we set up? Yeah, the, the, the parking areas in the plaza, the new lot down by the market, flow into the functions. Like most things, and there's one in particular you see, it's always going to be there. Problem. This is the grand show of the year where everybody wants to be here. Big award, all the points that have accumulated from the other three shows. We have you know, got one rascal that drives from California, probably in two cars, dollars worth of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's his thing. He will budget. Uh, John, you you guys were rolling on this. Is really a big event to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. And he, he, does, he goes to four shows a year across the country. Cars from Rocket, California. We appreciate you guys holding it here. Oh, yeah, we're looking Great forward event. Sounds exciting. You sound all well-behaved. I always appreciate that. We had, we, had a, we had a major event in Nashville, Tennessee, the 40th anniversary of the Mustang. <coughs> uh, I, I guess I shouldn't talk about car brands, but we took 2,000 cars to downtown Nashville and parked them downtown. I, I was the last car coming in, and the sheriff's department met me on a horse, led me to my parking place. You guys are the most well-behaved, courteous <laughs> car enthusiasts, uh, among several others that we've seen. It's it's a fun time for everybody that participates. We appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Move to consent quickly. Second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So moved. And next we have uh, item purchase. Yes, uh, purchase of a capital item for Parks and Recreation. This is a toolcat unit uh, used to uh, primarily maintain the greenway. It has lots of different, um, I guess, that can be added. It can mow and blow and all sorts of stuff. So uh, this will save a tremendous amount of staff time. We can also use this for event setup. A staying event set up, uh, and we've been sort of borrowing one of these from other departments. But since we have sort of day to day duties now with the Greenway, it's a, a need for us. So we'd like to recommend approval of this purchase. Yeah, hey, these do we own? Various departments, probably three, three or four. <coughs> three. Day -day. Three. Going day to day, we, we uh, mow it once or twice a week. Times we try to blow it every other day. Help me, so, <laughs> blow it off every other day. Uh, trash clean up. Uh, so, how long it is, and how and that can take a long time if you don't have the right tools in place. On Columbia Road, I go greatly used, tremendously enjoyed. Appreciate you multiplying the effect by the with the out attachments. Yes, <coughs> right. There's a lot of landscaping along along, especially along Columbia Road and stuff. So who's doing it now? How are we getting it done? We're doing it. Stuff we have by hand, backpack by hand. blowers, yeah. and by hand. Oh, oh.
Uh, I don't think we have any outstanding contracts anymore, do we? I think we took it all in-house, and, and uh, nothing against the people we had contracts with, but our employees are obviously doing a great job because it looks better than it's ever looked for less money. Boots can sit. Have you been talking to Billy? I think we need to... <laughs> <laughs> Second, but I admit I, I don't get it. So moved. Any uh, added items? Mr. Driver, any legal? Very good. Yes, staff reports. Good morning. I uh, submit for your information the annual summary of our responses and last month as well as current budget report. Good commissioners or public comment? Fall down. None or lost. Correct. Nothing for executives. So uh, at eight forty one, we'll adjourn. Short. You need a few minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Good, lighters. Oh, without a doubt. Board of the Public Works and Engineering Services Committee for March 24. Already having the invitation and pledge. We have three commissioners present. All have reviewed the previous meeting minutes. Uh, so inclined. Motion on those. Who do accept, sir? Second. Good. Johnson. Set for your approval, Mr. Chairman. No presentations this morning. Uh, Mr. Tides will present it to you. Hey, good morning. The first item we have for your consideration is an agenda item that was tabled from last com last month's committee. It is for a proposal um, from Tanko Street Lighting for street light for our street light procedure uh, audit and update. Um, there are a lot of uh, with our current procedure. There are some issues from tracking from the time we actually implement a street light, how it gets implemented in GIS, and there are some also some fiscal issues to where we get uh, street light districts from developers, and they're not always um, responsible for the entire upfront upfront cost of the installation of street lights. The county kind of gets stuck with the uh, with the bill if it does not work out in our favor. Um, so we wanted this, this firm to come in and evaluate our streetlights, our current policy, 
in addition, evaluate our safety lighting policy and potentially at the direction of a lighting policy committee appointed by the county, develop a corridor lighting policy and a commercial lighting policy into one comprehensive street lighting. Um, since this was tabled, we've also had discussions with Georgia Power. Um, they would like to get involved and let us know a little more about the information they have. Uh, other entities they work with and the procedures they have they want to make sure that we're getting all the data that they have from a GI standpoint and what we're being billed for paying for um, so staff's recommendation is to actually move this item to full board's debate agenda allowing us a few more weeks to work with Georgia Power to get a little more information for you for your consideration so Georgia Power does have something that's similar to what they do whatever they'll be able to just get us the information happening in our county in our county that's correct move to debate second so move <clears throat> yes sir uh, staff mr titus mr Pricky back there hit their staff they've been working hard on revising a speed thump policy um Pricky, come on up and take the question Pricky. him since he handles the <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, we've been working on this for quite a while. I know we've had some discussions offline with, with commissioners individually. Um, we originally came to you with a proposal. Um, I know it, it met with some um, disagreements on how we should move forward with our policy. Um, we've gotten here now where a single, in, a single person on a road can call and require and ask for a study to be done and staff will go out and do that and it probably spend 10 12 15 man hours the time they go out set the tubes up collect the data we're seeing that 90 percent of those studies that are done do not warrant speed um we see this as a perception issue people perceive speed as an issue on their roads when it might not be we spend a lot of staff time on it um we also see a lot of um anger between the residents one person wants it, one person doesn't. I've seen neighborhoods tear themselves apart over speed humps. Staff looked at a way of, of coming up with a policy that, that allows the request to be made. It also allows input from the neighbors whether or not we do this process. Um, we originally came to you with a policy that said 51% of the neighbors would re be required to request the study before it would be done. Um, that's based on information that we get from the International Transportation Engineers Group um, other publications that we've looked at, other other communities, how they do it, just to get buy-in. However, we saw that uh, we got some requests to, to look at that further, so we moved it down to 25%. Uh, current policy that you have in front of you today says 25% of the residents on the street would have to sign the petition requesting the study to be done. Um, our current policy also does not allow for a way to remove speed humps. This new policy does. It does. I believe 100% participation. Everybody in the entire neighborhood, on, I'm sorry, everybody on the road with the speed humps must agree that the speed humps are to come out for it to be done. It and also paperwork. says that they're not going to go back in for five years. You can't take them out today and then come back tomorrow and go, oh, they're speeding again. Um, I'll jump in here if there's anything else you want to add about this, the program y'all written. The, the removal part, it would be 100% funded by the street and the, the homeowners if they wanted it removed. Have to be 100% agreed to by the homeowners and funded by the homeowners. Based How are they going to pay it? So roads, roads and bridges would do an, an estimate on the raw cost to remove those speed humps, and we provide that estimate to the homeowners. And have to reimburse the county for that amount. So we would send them a bill that they would have to pay. If they, if the whole road wants the speed humps removed after they've petitioned us to put them in. They've petitioned us, we put them in, now they come back and say, we don't like them, take them out. Put them in with taxpayer dollars, they come out with their dollars. Right, so if you were a person who was against it, then you have to pay that. <clears throat> uh, whoever can answer this, I'm, I'm looking at the 25% threshold. Is that for the entire run of the street or is that for an address range? The entire run. Entire run of the street. As as a policy would the the implementation of speed humps would apply to the whole street. So they would be installed along the whole corridor. 
I, I have a couple questions for you. Uh, it looks like from the way we do it now, citizen calls in, hey, I'd like to have study wherever their address is. I think that's where we put the tube down. Or whatever. Most of the time, we'll, we'll actually <coughs> ask them where they would like the study conducted because they're the ones that are saying as far as speeding. So they may live towards the end, but when they're walking their dog or something, like people are speeding. Well, we get their input. So now one person can do that. Yes, sir. Doesn't warrant. Nothing happens. We tell them, sorry, didn't meet our our requirements for speed humps. <clears throat> Call us next year. Yes, sir. Okay. But with the new policy, looks like there's going to be a lot more staff work before we go out. A person's going to still call. Y'all do, it looks like, work, additional work. Then you tell this person you're going to do the study, but you also you need to get 50, 25, 10, whatever we settle on uh, before we'll do this study. So we do whatever and give them the paperwork, then they're going to have to go out and gather the signatures to meet that. Number. Yes, sir. So staff's put how much time in to get there, where before staff hadn't put any time in well, other than going out and doing the study. At that point, it's, a, it's almost the same because if one person calls, then we're going to take the time to go out there and lay the tubes out. Then we got to come back and pick them up the next day and actually study. Um, here... You've got to have residents on the road that are, that's about the initial. I don't th I don't think that's the way I read it. So so both with the existing policy that's in place now and what we're proposing, there's an initial screening. One person can call and get an initial right. screening done. Same effort in both both right. scenarios. So now the one if, person can start you working and doing all of this so stuff, but then if they don't get the twenty five percent. You don't go out and you don't, work you don't, with it. Yes, sir. Because once we don't want to, once we do the study, we have to abide by the study. So you can't do the study and then get the petition. Or you know. uh, let me shift gears. Former uh, yes. traffic. Yes, sir. Deputy in Richmond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How do you know if somebody's speeding? You write a ticket for speeding in a neighborhood. Not your regular deputies. State patrol can. But, but uh, how many dev how many state patrols do we have patrol uh, well, yeah. uh, neighborhoods? Yeah, no. Okay. So ticket can't be written for speeding. Not in for the speeding. Yeah. But too fast for conditions. Fast conditions. Reckless, reckless driving. driving. Yes. Sir. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I I just have a real concern that doesn't warrant it. We don't put the speed humps in it. It, it monitors itself. It doesn't matter whether 100% of the neighborhood or one person says it. If people uh, meets the number and they're flying through the neighborhood, it meets it. It warrants it. Regardless, do you think the guy that's hauling tail through the neighborhood is going to sign? Yeah, let me sign up that I want to uh, have speed humps. That, do <laughs> that doesn't make I'm, I'm just, uh, I just don't understand the rationale. How does, it relate to, how does it relate to street lights? I know we talked about that before. Right, but street, street lights require 75% of. 75%. That's correct. So in this process, right now one person can request it and more that they get it. The other, one person requests it, they tell it, we give them a list. We create the petition. Get input from the rest of the community. They, did, um, they collect it, though, not us, or we they collect, collect it? They collect it. So they said they, I'm just trying to make sure I'm clear. They say they think people are speeding and they want to study, whatever the case may be. And so then we're going to say, okay, here's your petition, get 25%, but here's your population you have to get it from. So we'll, we'll make it clear to who they have to get it from, then they have to get 25% for us to do the study. Patient back. Process the study. How many do we have in the tube? Uh, 48. And we can't dispose of them until we have policy. Kind of clarification. Yes. 
hear saying, but I also think that one person shouldn't dictate to the whole. They're not dictating. Warrants it, it warrants it. If it don't, it's thrown in the trash. That one person is not dictating the people that are falling butt up and down. Like you, you might not. Two sons, I had two sons. I didn't speed through the neighborhood, but I'd venture to say my two sons did. I'd venture to I say, shall admit to nothing on the record. I'd venture to say <laughs> your two sons did too. So uh, I, I just, I don't understand the problem that if it warrants it, it warrants it. Now, we have to, we have to approve the radar permit for Columbia County every year. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Well, every To ask all the citizens, do we want to shoot radar? Because we could vote that down, and then I think radar would go away. Is that correct? Somewhat? About the permit. So, I mean, where are we going to draw the line? That, that's just my... And I have to come at it from a perspective of more than one person should have a say because I mean, how long do we do a study for? Uh, about 24 hours. 24 hour study, and at that point, warrants are done. But what if it's a bad day? I mean, I, that, that's not going to change if you had 100 people sign up whether it's a bad day or not. Right. Who came home? Who didn't right. go to work? or Whatever. I mean, we do it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We don't go to schools and sessions. When schools in session, so eight big times. One of the big and complaints. if it's raining, we're not going to do it or any of that stuff, correct? Well, no, sir. One, one of the big complaints. That the person at the top of the road is only the one going to complain, um, and then the ones towards the end of the road have to go over the home or get out to go to the. That's one of the complaints. Other issue, I guess, to look at and talk about the numbers. The way our study is done, when you use 100 houses, I know that's not right, but 100 houses, at one car per house, just to based, our study says if 15 of those 100 people are, are doing 10 miles an hour of the speed limit, speed humps go in. That means 85 that were not speeding are now being punished. That's the complaint we get. Are you really being punished? They, they feel they are. That, that's the complaints we're getting. Mr. Mr. Chairman, you live in a neighborhood that feel punished when you're going in and out every day. I lived in a neighborhood with them. I didn't feel punished. Do you feel punished, Mr. Titus? I'd prefer not to have them, but that's I believe that it's with as much discussion as we're having right now, I uh, I'll motion for this debate so that all the commissioners, each of us have different districts and uh, constituencies on um, needs a discussion of the full body. I'll second that. If the full body says no, then I'll move. So move. Thank you. Mr. Thank Craig. you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Titus. All right. Fine. Next one we have for you is a Columbia um, County Sheriff's Admin Building. I'm going to let Mr. Prather come up and Tell you about the good work he's done on this project. How doing? Good morning, Steve. I have three items to present all this morning. Uh, the first being the door to the Sheriff's Administration Building. As you know, we started this work uh, a couple of months ago, and it's been a long journey. Extremely excited to get the numbers back in this market that we're in right now. So we are uh, we're looking to start this project. Hopefully, notice this uh, in September. Um, our lowest and most qualified bidder was S.T. Clifton, the amount of uh, $6,140,000. So staff recommends approval of that award to S.T. Clifton. In the back of your packet, you'll see a, a, your rendering also if you haven't seen the, uh, what it looks like. Is this part of a splost? Yes. How close are, are we to, budget-wise, how close are we to what we projected? We're... Uh, do I even yeah. want to ask that question? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. We're, no, yeah, absolutely. We are well under budget, so we've uh, we've spent a lot of time getting these drawings right. So, so staff's worked really hard. This this project is under budget, and and Sploss Collections, for the first time in our history, looks like we're going to go all the way to tier three. So the collections are, are coming in very well. 
can see it. Second. Second, <clears throat> second item I have for y'all's consideration is a uh, change order for the PAC. This is change order 12. This is for the upfit of the multipurpose room. And as you recall, in the original bid documents, we left that as a shell. So we were leaving it unfinished because we didn't know exactly what we wanted that room to be. Um, once we hired Matt Jameson as our manager, he's kind of helped mold that space and figure out how we're going to use it. Um, he has some really good plans for a basically a VIP area as well as some other um, events that can go in that area. So this is the change order to complete the work in that room um, with a completion date of no later than October 2nd. Our last project within the building? This is the last big project. This is not the last change order. Uh, we're, we still have our um, the change order directives we've been issuing all along. Um, as you know, this project uh, had a, a smaller contingency allowance, and we've, we've gone over that. So we've been doing smaller change orders along the way. So here in the next few months, I'm going to probably present to you a change order 13. It will be the last change order, um, and we'll, we'll close that project out. Multi-purpose room is on the south side of the building to the right of the box office. It's a double height, really high space, really nice space. Right, the museum's complete. I mean, it just needs something to go in it. I'll be talking about, I, I can just mention that. We've been working with um, the folks, uh, Nancy Glazer, the executive director of the Augusta Museum of History, and and uh, she actually has some ideas and some things that we may be able to use. We've compiled a list of kind of the, the types of things that, or not the types of things, we've compiled a list of the periods that we want to, to talk about, and we've just got to get back with Nancy again and start doing that. Right now, that space will probably be used uh, for overflow, for events and stuff like that until we can get it done, but it will stand up as a museum once we get everything. Staff recommends approval for uh, change order 12 in the amount of 100 $149,046.35. This and one's conflict with any other. So this is where it gets just a little pushing numbers around. We're awarding 77 days to the contract. The contract has already reached substantial completion. As a paperwork, as a back auditing thing, we have to make up those days to get substantial completion. So, and we also have to make sure the contractor gets this work done by our date of Broadway. So. It's kind of a, a, a basically just paperwork on my end. They are very aware of the dates. Move to consent. Second. So move. <clears throat> the third item I have for your cons consideration is the uh, renovations of G3, uh, the building right down the street here that uh, we are planning for Board of Elections to use. Um, we're renovating the front side of that. It, as you know, we have early voting there and people get stacked out the door. So this will help better flow people into the building. Um, we provide a new handicap ramp, an accessible door, a canopy, um, and basically just realign how people flow through that building. Uh, we did take some proposals on this project, um, fell under a $100,000 public work project, so we did not have to bid it. And staff recommends approval for continental construction in the amount of $41,311 to do the Everyone go up? Yes. Everyone will enter the building? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll still have a second entrance, but I believe that the majority of people voting will come up that ramp into the building. This is on the front side where the dumpster's at. I'm just questioning all, all engineers. Maybe you can help me if somebody's in a wheelchair and they're 70 years old and they're on. <laughs> On the hump going in, is that, is that an issue or not? Well, issue? we've we've designed it for handicap accessibility. I mean, that, that ramp is. Get it, but if the line is 200 people sitting on the ramp, that may be a procedure with Board of Elections how they handle. I've seen them come. They have somebody watching. They'll they'll push those people in the front. As long as it's ADA com uh, compatible. That yes. It should mean staying on the ramp while you're moving. Yeah, I got yeah. you. Yeah, as you're going up the ramp. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can work. Nancy have to work an issue out of how she can hold that place for that person or move them directly to the front. They bring them in. I, I saw them do it. And once this is done, just for the entire commission, 
to, to understand. Once this is completed, early voting has been so successful here, Board of Relations will completely relocate their offices there. So they'll be occupying this space going forward. Uh, we're remodeling the rest of the space interior there as well. So we'll reassign the space down the, the hill. Move to consent. Second. Thank you. So moved. Mason, how are ready you, sir? For, I'm good. Y'all ready for me this morning? Gosh. I have a long list of items for you. Sure so. do. <laughs> um, first it item. take Billy long to train you how to spend that money, do it? <laughs> no, I, I, I think I'm spending it faster than he likes. So. I, I'm sure you're spending <laughs> it faster than he likes. <laughs> um, the first item I have is uh, the laydown yard where we have a contract dated uh, 3 17 2020 with um, Blue Water Engineering. Um, looking at the project, uh, we do some work out there at, at night, and I, I felt like it was a safety issue not to have lighting. So I asked Blue Water to go back and look at their contract and give us an additional price to add lighting. And in that discussion, we talked with them we could cut some costs by doing a pre engineered building also. So um, between the lighting addition and saving a couple thousand dollars in a pre-engineered building, um, there's an increase to their engineering fee of $6,975 to move up to a total fee of $39,540. And uh, staff recommends approval of the revised proposal to Blue Water. Ben. Second. So moved. I'm not voting. I'm out of here. I'm going to leave just before the track loader. No more. <laughs> I quit. I'm out of here. <laughs> um, we currently have uh, our second items, the purchase of a Bobcat um, compact track loader. We currently have an old 1992 Holland at the Reed Creek um, wastewater plant causing us a lot of issues. It's really kind of small for the job, so we want to purchase a uh, Bobcat um, on source well pricing for $72,728 to replace this unit. And actually, we want to repurpose that unit, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, to replace this unit, the um, reason we want to use the Bobcat is we already use one at Little River. We have multiple accessories uh, for this that we can share between the two plants um, to save us some money. and um, so this will be a, a good piece of equipment to do the mowing, to do um, deal with the drying beds and, and multiple uses that we have for it. And also the existing equipment in 1992 Holland, since we've recently taken over the Harlem plant, we want to repurpose that, uh, fix it, and use it at that plant. So staff recommends approval of purchase via contract pricing with Sourcewell. Talking about uh, attachment. Out of Harlem, time and effort. Mm -hmm. and all that. How, how much and money are you talking about? I'm not sure. I don't know if Nick or John can help me out. I'm not sure the cost of those attachments. I understand that, but my question is, oh, do we need the attachments where we're going to use this bobcat? What, so we, what, so does, we, a, what does a bucket cost? Yeah, what, what does a bucket a, what or whatever you're going to use? A frail, so a frail mower hauling. cost. What's a four-way bucket go for? How about a cutting head? Five grand. Can I get you? I know y'all folks don't do this, but my guys love to ride to the warehouse, come back to the job, and then oh well, I forgot, and go back to the warehouse. I know we don't do that on the county, but <laughs> my guys do. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I, 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 hey, everybody's smart enough to figure that one out. So. Uh, 
pleasure on buying the thing, and I'd like to ask that y'all look for whatever attachments that we think we may need, and let's just look at it. Cause I don't think in the scheme of things, you're talking about a whole lot of money. Yeah, I, uh, you know, sure I, you I, I now understand that yeah, have, have as a property, I now understand why farmers have five and six tractors, because the, the model ages out, the implements are not compatible with the feds with, with what you just bought. And uh, I, I'm, I'm also in favor of, if you need something else to future-proof it, I'm, I'm for that. Then we can move this to consent. And we can move forward with this, Mr. Chairman, and then if, you, if, if we can get the prices on the other stuff, and then we either have the ability to purchase those, and if they're outside of my approval, then I'll contact you according to our new policy, and then you can approve those. They, they already had equipment, but they took it. So we no longer have that equipment. So they, they kept their public <laughs> works department. We bought their water and sewer. They kept their public works department. So the equipment that we bought from them was all related to water and sewer. If they had a, a tractor or a piece of equipment, they kept that with public works. Right. Wasn't part of the deal. But we didn't want it. <laughs> Same. All right, move to consent. The next item I have is a uh, bid for uh, electrical modifications at both the Clarks Hill and, uh, and the Blanchard uh, water treatment plants. Um, we uh, took a bid from R.D. Brown in the amount of uh, $1,867,000 for this project. Uh, engineer's estimate was uh, $2.5 million on the project, so we're well under budget. And staff recommends uh, acceptance of the bid and enter entering into a contract with R.D. Brown. This, uh, we discussed this earlier, this was not in our budget prior to the acquisition of the Harlem? No, no, this is, this is a separate, this is on our water treatment plants. This is on, on our water treatment Yeah, this, this is one that was a part of the extension and renewal um, project going a couple years back. Is this a budgeted item, sir? Uh, yeah, it's part of extension and renewal, right. yes, sir. Move to consent, sir. Move. The next item we have is a uh, engineering proposal from Cranston. Um, the building that we're in, uh, Building A at the Water Utility, we've been in it about 10 years now, and uh, there needs to be some painting, some touch-up work, uh, pair a few items that we've we've budgeted for this coming year. Um, but uh, there are some settling cracks in the wall. There's a there's a place in the wall where the tilt-up panels you can kind of see through and see where it's kind of pulling out from the wall so you can see the rebar that ties everything together. And we just want to get a structural engineer out there to take a look at it, say everything looks good before we um, start cleaning things up, you know, caulking things, you know, hiding cracks, those kind of items. So uh, we have a proposal from Cranston to, uh, for structural services in the amount of $4,985. Um, staff recommends the approval of the proposal. We move to consent. Um, the next item is a sawdust road water line proposal. We have, excuse me. We have a uh, engineering proposal from infrastructure systems management uh, to provide a 12 inch water line to connect our old Louisville road ground storage tank and pumping station to the sawdust road tank. Um, currently, we're, we're going out after, this is in Harlem, currently we go out there and we have zero chlorine residuals at the tank. Um, we're just having trouble moving water in and out because the tank only has, you know, it's a half a million gallon tank and it only has two six inch lines feeding it, um, which is extremely small for that size of tank. And uh, so we want to route a 12 inch line to get water into that area, but also be able to move water out of that area so we can you know, fill and drain the tank and get proper circulation in the tank. And it's about 31,000 feet of, uh, of water line. And, um, and ISM proposes to provide these services at 5.5% uh, uh, estimated 
$162,000 in engineering fees, and uh, staff recommends approval of this proposal. The uh, next item is a uh, force main uh, to Uchi Creek. This, uh, this force main is gonna go from I-20 Athlean Harlem Highway, that intersection, travel down a power line easement all the way to the uh, Uchi Creek uh, sewer, sewer main. So we're gonna pump in it. It'll have three lift stations along the way. Um, what this sewer does is gives us a lot of flexibility in that area. Um, we have we have a lot of development that's going to be going on through there, um, all the way back to Uchi Creek. It allows us to take some water from the industrial or some sewer from the industrial park area and maybe even from Harlem, and uh, pump it back on a temporary basis. We have some participation from developers because they were already going to be putting lift stations along this line, so um, we're able to leverage that to install this to give us some flexibility as they grow. And as a temporary purpose too, if we have issues that we need to transfer sewer from Kauke Creek temporarily, then we can kind of catch up with upgrades with that plant. We can transfer them into this line, um, or we can transfer some sewer temporarily from Harlem till we're able to get other things in place. And uh, you know, like we've we've had to put out development in Harlem and put a moratorium on that. So we may be able to use this. We'll be able to use this line, and it's a quicker fix. You know, we're talking a year and a half versus you know, three to three and a half years for the plant project and for a uh, gravity sewer line. So doing this uh, force mains a lot faster project. So this will allow us to temporarily do some things and give us flexibility until some of that development catches up and fills up the line. Um, so we're looking at putting 12 and 16 inch line in and, uh, and the force main and engineering fees are proposed at six and a half percent of the project are $355,000, and staff recommends approval of this proposal. <clears throat> Three projects, I think. Forward development projects. Yeah, there was uh, 75 townhomes, 28 townhomes, and then a 322-lot subdivision that we, to this point, we've said no to because we just don't have the sewer capacity available. Projects coming up. Yeah. They don't have capacity until we're until we're able to solve some of those sewer issues. How long? Um, probably a year and a half, two at max. Um, we can go ahead and, and get this going, and it's kind of a temporary fix because really it's to kind of help with an industrial park. If we get a big user, it's it really gives us just a lot of flexibility. But eventually, this line will be filled up with the development of the bird track and some of the other tracks along that along that path. We have a 695 home development that they're requesting now um, that'll pump into this line also. So I mean, we'll utilize it for that and get that developer participation. But until they build out, we can use it for other purposes. So we want to go ahead and control how fast we get this in and where we put our lift station so we can temporarily use it for our purposes and, and give us some benefit and not just for development. And we had to discuss this in, in short. A lot of the infrastructure out in Harlem was aging and needed repair. Yes, sir. Our approach to it, to politely say the sewer where it belongs mm -hmm. and avoid catastrophe. Yeah. And Thank you. Uh, the next item is uh, the Kauke Creek uh, Water Pollution Control Plan expansion. Um, currently, now our, we're doing our Kauke Creek plant is not seeing a lot of a lot of use, but with Amazon coming on, it's going to add another eighty thousand gallons a day. With with the, um, some of we're transferring some of the load from Harlem to help us out um, temporarily uh, to to get our Harlem plant within compliance because. The rainy days, we were almost doubling our, our plant flow. And um, so we're, we're seeing a lot of growth at this plant, a lot of extra usage use at the plant. Um, so we're wanting to expand the plant. Uh, Greenpoint 
comes on, we'll add another, when it's fully built out 15 years from now, we'll add another 350,000 gallons to, to this um, basin. So we're looking at um, expanding this plant from 300,000 gallons a day to 750,000 gallons a day. We're gonna reuse some of the existing plant and repurpose it to save some money on the plant. Um, so we have a proposal for engineering fees of 7%, which is $622,000 in engineering fees, and staff recommends approval of this proposal. Couple, couple. I wouldn't say move forward, it was. Well, it was uh, talked about. It was, talked it was about. presented and denied. I think there was a lot of, Mr. Chairman, I think there was a lot of concern about upgrading this plant would open up development that would be outside of our growth management plan. That's not the case. The, the, the engineering that we're talking about doing for this plant, expanding this capacity, prepares us for the future. It doesn't have anything to do with allowing all of this capacity to be used today. This is something that has to be done for the future of Columbia County. And, and it's a great plant. There's no sense in not having you know, what we need there for the future. I think there was some concern from Couple of commissioners. Uh, us doing that, creating an industrial park, I thought because there were several large, large tracks, people talking about residential development. I think the concern from the commissioners were that those guys jump on board and get approved and then use up allotment that were developed. Uh, were, a whole lot of money to develop an industrial part and use up the sewage from there. Was, I think the concern. It was, and, and we heard that concern loud and clear, which is why you've seen Mr. Gordon come back with some of his other recommendations. You know, the, the fact that we're looking to uh, increase capacity of that Uchi Creek Basin means that we're going that direction and not a gravity to Kaoki right now, because we we heard exactly the concerns of the, of the commission and and understand that the what y'all are trying to accomplish there. So um, that won't happen now in this scenario right off the bat because we're, we're actually, like I said, taking that a different direction. I think if we were if we were saying increase the capacity and let us put in a gravity sewer line down 221, then absolutely that would probably be something you'd be very concerned with. But we understand that we're not making that recommendation. I was gonna add one thing to that. One of, one of my concerns is as as the development authority comes to me and says, do we have sewer capacity with everything going on with Harlem and all the other things? I'm gonna have to say no, because sure. with their, you know, they have plants that are looking for, do y'all have 50,000 gallons a day? Do you have 100,000 gallons a day? And we just don't have that capacity without expanding. So it really does hurt our industrial park not to have that upgrade. On spin off, I've talked to you about, and I appreciate you a lot of information I didn't know all engineers get to change the price every month, obviously. <laughs> That's a monthly deal, pretty sweet. Manage, I get something's a little harder, it may cost a little bit, whatever, but I don't, under, I don't understand. Is there anybody else besides maybe turnip seed or Zale or whoever gets a project there anybody else that we allow to look at that part because if if this people somebody may want to do it for five and a half I don't know you know that's in the scheme of a big project of millions of dollars that's not a whole lot but a couple hundred thousand dollars is a couple hundred thousand dollars so uh, we look at other companies or is, is a certain engineering firm locked in for a certain type of project, I, I just don't know where we're at on that. No, sir, we don't. Typically, you don't bid out the engineering services, but we go out and evaluate our engineers, and we and the ones we have, we have for because we trust them. We trust they're going to give us good value with our project, and it might be a little bit of a long story, but if you'll bear with me, the best way I know to explain that is to kind of tell a story. Yeah. Is I designed a water treatment plant for Breezy Hill back in 2011, and... Um, and at the same time, uh, another engineering firm, a large one, Black & Veatch, was designing a, a uh, project for Woodruff Roebuck. And we were kind of coordinating because we were planning on our schedules matched up. We were planning on bidding it 
at the same time and the same contractors, you know, we're going to be bidding both projects. So we worked to where we were bidding it two weeks before the Black and Veatch project. And our plant was a 4.7 million gallon plant. And actually we designed it for 9.4 million gallons. Um, it had the filtering capacity of the basins. It just didn't have the pipes and the pumping capacity to remove it from the plant. Um, that project bid at four or at nine point four million dollars. The Breezy Hill project. Well, the Woodruff Roebuck project, which is a four million gallon plant, there were no expansion built in. There was nothing. Was a um, was a twenty six million dollar project. Now you know they could have had a five percent fee and still made one and a half times the money that we made. Um, you know so. I don't just look at what the engineer's percentage fee is. I look at what kind of value they bring to the project. Um, turnip seed is, uh, they've already called and said, hey, we see you have these other, when we did the cost estimate, we worked on it, they say, we see you have that force main. Can we temporarily put some water or some sewer there so we can rehab the SBRs and the clarifiers, save you a million dollars? So, I mean, there are things, that's more than their fee. So, I mean, there are things they're looking at um, to help us out, and it kind of shoots themselves in the foot. If they just put a plant right over here, it'd been easier on them, and they'd have gotten more of a fee. So, it's a it's a level of value they give us, a level of trust we have with them. So, um, we don't just look at what their percentage is. We kind of look at the whole picture and and what we're used to and our history with them. Well, I'm, I'm not. I know y'all do. Always have. I really appreciate. What our utility department has done, right, and where we where we are today, all bolts of it. I'm sitting here and looking at dollars and a couple of million and a half in fees, whatever. So, uh, and I'm definitely going to question ask, yes, sir. and no, ask I, the question. I appreciate so, it because sometimes we miss stuff and we need to. We need to hear that. So I don't have an issue. I just, this particular job, I wasn't expecting necessarily a question because I really thought it should have probably been 7.5%. It should have been a little higher. That was the next one on the list I was really expecting well, I just to go through this with you. Rather than um, go ahead and yeah. beat half the conversation up or whatever. Yes, sir. So I, I know it's things that we have to look at and we have to move forward. Things really at cost or high and whatever. I guess we don't settle on this fee until the end of the job. So if everything goes down and down, their price will be dropping. Yes, sir. They usually bid about 80% of the, of the job and then when it bids, they make adjustments. Ben, sir. Um, the next item is a engineering proposal for the uh, Uchi Creek Harlem Interceptor. Um, we have a proposal from Turnip Seed to provide a gravity sewer from our existing, existing Harlem plant. Um, we plan on eventually closing that plant down and gravity and all the way to our uh, to the Uchi Creek sewer line. Um, works out well because Grove Town just built their plant and they're taking a million gallons a day off of it, so we have that capacity to to tie in there. Um, have a uh, a proposed engineering fee of seven percent at six hundred forty two thousand um, dollars from Turnip Seed Engineers. Uh, the staff recommends approval of this proposal. As you said on their little deal here, it is over above what the recommended. It is yes, sir. And that was one when, when I first saw it. Uh, I said you know it kind of came in at the same time as the other proposal. And when I first saw it, I like. It was probably really a six and three quarter in my mind um, from just experience. Uh, and it's a little high, but I didn't really question it because I felt like we were getting a good deal on the other one. So I was just like, I, I didn't go back and, and negotiate down on this. Um, we can go back to them and ask for a lower fee. Uh, but there are some issues on it that do prove to be a challenge. The tie-in at the plant is going to be a little bit of extra work. The uh, you know We're going to need to measure flow. We're going to need to measure... Um, wet well capacity where we tie in. Um, also, the, there's some really flat areas on the sewer that are going to require a little bit of additional um, calculations and work. So I didn't think it was outrageous, but I did think maybe we were you know, a little bit high on it. So um, 
good time to go back and just kind of shake them up a little bit and let them know that we're looking at it and hey can you relook at that field yes sir is i'll this, be is this urgent that we need to move this forward no sir we have that other one going to consent so that'll buy us a little bit of time um with this so i can go back and and talk with them about this one that's not a problem Mr. Chairman, I, I think if, if, if it would be okay with you, if you're okay with moving this item to debate, move it to debate. Let us go back and try to renegotiate the fee, and if we can bring you a lower fee, then you may be more comfortable with that. And um, if not, then we can debate the 7% fee at that time. I agree with you, though. I think I think we ought to go back and, and, and try to do that, and we will let them know that one of their projects moved to consent. The other one's going to be debated by the board, and if they want to adjust that fee, then it may get more favorable attention. Yes, sir. Yeah. Move to debate. So moved. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And the last item I have is Nicole's Lane sewer extension. Um, Mr. Carr Miller came to us. He's having septic issues at his plant or at his house, and he wants us to extend our sewer line over. We ran a quick cost estimate in the office, and it's roughly $10,000 to do that. He's he, we negotiated back and forth, and he agreed to a uh, $7,500 fee for that. And typically, you know, when when the homeowner puts that kind of money in, we waive their tap fee. So staff recommends acceptance of the $7,500 from Carl Miller and to approve waiver of a tap fee to allow Mr. Miller to connect to uh, the sewer line once construction is complete. So moved. All right. Sure. Thank you, gentlemen. Titus, going away. Yes, sir. First item we have for you is resolution 2136 to amend Maple Ridge Section 2 Streetlight District number 327A. We had a resident reach out to us, uh, ask us to reevaluate the lighting in that uh, district to see if uh, an additional light was warranted. Georgia Power did so, and they came back and said that it was warranted, and they provided an uh, an annual cost to install that, uh, or upfront pole cost to install that of $468.19 with an annual utility cost of $210.72 for that additional light. Or property owner. Sir. That's correct. So staff recommends adoption of resolution 2136 amendment by district. This doesn't require a reading, does it? So, so is it, you're not changing the fee, it's just adding additional light. Move to consent, sir. So moved. The second item we have for you is an easement plat for Michael Seward. Uh, this is off of Furious Ferry Road next to Publix, uh, 3505 Professional Circle. Uh, this is for the acceptance of utility improvements to include two sewer easements as depicted on a plat prepared by James G. Swift and Associates, dated December 3rd, 2020, and revised on July 15th, 2020. Uh, staff recommends acceptance of the improvements. Then. The next item is an easement plat for West Grove LLC. Uh, this is at 5003 Steiner Way. This is for the acceptance of utility improvements to include a sewer easement as depicted on a plat prepared by James G. Swift and Associates dated July 15th, 2021. Uh, this is out at Steiner Way uh, near Walmart at Horizon South. Uh, this is basically, there was a, uh, a sewer system installed behind the shopping center. It was never deeded to the county. They're asking for additional taps. In order for water utility to approve those additional taps, they need to deed this sewer to the Staff recommends acceptance of the utility. Thank you. 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 Usually when we see this, it's left off the, the plat. Um, they're in a hurry to open up. We try to help I, them out. I, I, yeah, I've asked that, but I generally well, and, follow up, I would think, or would right. you know that they would follow up? Or I think in this situation, it wasn't a huge issue. Because it's one sewer line, it was basically their individual tap going to our manhole, but once they want to start putting additional taps to it, it had to be public. Um, so in this case, I would think it was probably just one of those things where we wanted it, but they didn't want to give it to us, and we went, okay, have fun. Now they have to come back and... Sterling has done a good job with his staff, plan review, uh, 
guys their crew. They're doing a lot better job of making sure we get these in place before we get kind of go. You know, Paul's group works well. I think Paul stepped out. Paul's group works well. Well, my point is, you know, I know the, the guy that's spending the money to try and build the business to get open. He's ready to open, and the only thing that's holding him up is this, because Sarah didn't do what they were supposed to on a timely basis. I hate to see the guy not being able to open and start generating some revenue. But and every time they tell you, oh, I'll have that to you. I'll have it tomorrow. If you will give it to us, I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Or, or whatever, but just somehow just I don't know how we would alert it to – well, staff has been working, Kyle, Scott, Paul, they've been working with a new procedure that we're going to try to put in place where we can get a lot of this stuff handled early on in the project so that we're not dealing with it at the 11th hour. They're still working through some minor details, but hopefully we'll bring that to you soon. they are probably the past. Hey. Well, the contractors know that. Engineers know that. The guy that's paying the bill may not necessarily know most, that. Most of them do. And then he's ca he's caught and he's hung up. Yeah. He's the guy that's cutting the interest check on five million or ten, whatever whatever the amount. And then he's at, at the mercy of whenever get it and get it through our staff and do whatever. I hate having to call y'all and say, hey, can you help this guy out? I mean, he's going to get it to you next week or two, whatever. I promise you. And then he lets me down. So That process is going to change where they have to give us all that stuff early, early in the project so that we're not at the 11th hour asking for it. Did you have a motion there? Okay, the next item we have is a final plat for Champions Overlook Section 1B off of Riverwood Parkway. Uh, this is directly south of the, the roundabout in, inside the gate at Riverwood Parkway. It abuts the south side of the roundabout. Um, this is for acceptance of final plat and improvements to include the sanitary sewer systems for, uh, for Champions Overlook Phase 1B, along with the easements associated with the improvements as specified depicted on a plat prepared by HNC Land Surveying Incorporated dated July 10th, 2021. Staff recommends acceptance of improvements to include, now the recommendation sheet says to include the storm and the sanitary sewer improvements, but it's only for the sanitary sewer improvements. The storm is private, so that's staff recommends acceptance of improvements to include only the sanitary sewer Center. So moved. The next item we have is a rejection of bid number 2021-031 uh, for LMIG safety striping of various roads. Um, staff is seeking approval to reject this bid. When we first bid it, we thought that it was going to come in over our budget. Uh, total budget with our match is a little over $238,000. However, the bids came in around $180,000. So when we first bid it, we pulled out of, out of all the signage improvements and upgrades. We'd like to rebid it and include those in the bid as well and do it all at one time. Staff recommends a, approval of the rejection of this bid so that we can rebid the project to include the, the signage upgrades. Move your assent. Move. The next item we have for you is a professional services contract with infrastructure consulting and engineering for construction inspection services on Lewiston Road widening project. Uh, in October of 2020, uh, the board approved a sampling and materials testing contract with Wood and Partners. Uh, this is for construction inspection services to assist our inspectors uh, out at Lewiston it's a large project, a lot of moving parts. We have one full-time inspector on that job. Um, if there are two or three considerable things going on, that one inspector gets stretched thin and could miss things. 
This is to bring on an additional full-time inspector from infrastructure consulting and engineering. Uh, there is currently a, a budgeted line item in the, uh, the TIA budget of $1.6 million. Uh, so between the sampling materials testing and this, if so approved, uh, we would still have 570,000 estimated remaining in the TIA line item for uh, construction services. Staff recommends approval of the contract with ICE for construction inspection services on the project. Now the approval of this will just be for approving their, their rates, their, their inspector rates saying that they can send these inspectors at our discretion to the jobs and bill the county accordingly. We just estimate uh, a total cost for the project of about 530,000. Inspector won't be on the job all the time. There will be one full-time inspector. There's gonna be a, a, a schedule of about five other different type of senior engineers, uh, bridge inspectors that we can pull as needed, but there's gonna be one full-time inspector on the job 40 hours a week. This is a TIA uh, funded? This is a TIA project that is TIA reimbursable, that's correct, and there is already a line item for it. Uh, the 570 remaining, what will that be? Uh, the five Kyle's got in the budget, I think 1.6 million yeah, for right. testing and inspection. So we're spending a million of that, million two yeah, there three. that we're estimating. So the remaining 500,000 will go towards any over any other overruns we have in our project. Um, if there's money left over at the very end, everything's paid for, that money goes back to the TIA program as a whole to fill in shortfalls on other TIA projects throughout the region. And when all TIA projects are done, whatever's left over gets divvied up amongst all the counties according to our LARP formula. We are basically the way our discretionary money comes to us now, they just give us more discretionary. So if we don't spend it, we give away most of it. Correct. Moving it said. So move. The last item we have for you, uh, similarly uh, with Lewiston Road, this is for Furious Ferry. Uh, staff realized that uh, we could actually advertise for construction materials testing and construction inspection services together and just hire one full time inspector, and that full time inspector could do both services if that firm was qualified to do that, if that inspector was qualified to do that, and we could save money using that uh, approach. Um, so this is for the same thing on Furious Ferry to include materials testing um, and sampling along with construction inspection services. Uh, this is a contract with I Infrastructure Consulting Engineering or ICE, the same firm we're hiring for Lewiston Road. Uh, this would, we've estimated that their total cost would be about 800,000 whereas we have a $1 million line item for construction services on this project. Again, this is TIA reimbursable. This project, we would get 3% of whatever we spend uh, back, pay back to us for admin fee. So staff recommends approval of the contract with ICE. Good consent, sir. Thank you. Staff report on the year to date. Right. I've included the year to date uh, budget report and the uh, water and sewer construction projects report. If y'all have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Obligation. Talking about forward here. He's fine. <laughs> is, 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 sir. is this infrastructure some of the American? Yes, yes, sir. So, so we're in the process. We're in the process now of looking at at the more utilities fund balances, and then also looking at uh, qualifying projects that we can use the uh, Rescue Act money for. Um, and uh, water utilities also applied for a grant, so we're going to look at that and possibly use some of that as grant money. Uh, but we're we're very comfortable with with the level of uh, the amount of projects we have and the and the amount of funding. There would be no need to, to bond this or borrow any money for anything that we have on the horizon. You want to add anything, Stacy? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> good answer. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Any questions? No, sir. All right. Any uh, 
for public comment. Executive session items. We have a couple. Yes, sir. Are adjourned at 9:45. Hey, no.